welcome to Mayan Ampugin's international Facebook site and welcome to Mayan Ampugin's who are in London right now and to our good friend Bo, which is who is in uh, the north of Denmark and I'm sitting in the south of Denmark. I am Annette and I am helping Mayan to build this uh, opportunity up to talk about spirit and communications. And I will excuse for my poor English and we have maybe a very strong um, Scandinavian accent, but uh, I hope that you can understand us anyway. So, Mayan. Oh, no, sorry, I give you the word now. Hello, Bo. Hello, just say hello. I'm Bo, and uh, I'm here to help out a little bit about the technical side of, of this. Um, and I'm like Annette also from Denmark, so I have this fat Danish accent or Jutland's accent. <laughs> But I hope you can understand. Please, please ask it if anything is not understood. Thank you. Thank you. And Good hello, evening. Marion, and welcome. Thank you very much indeed. I don't think I have that strong an accent, but I have lived in Great Britain for the past 50 years. So my English is maybe a little bit more understood, I hope. Though I do make mistakes in English, but I make just as many mistakes in Danish or Norwegian for that matter. But it is wonderful that we have set this uh, specific site up, which has become an international site uh, for promotion, I have to say, about the mediumship which has existed within the Nordic countries and within Europe for over a hundred years. And I just think that it is good to be able to understand a little more and learn a little bit more and maybe this is the time where I have to try to introduce myself. I came first of all to England in 1969, uh, but was born in Denmark in a little town called Slaelse, which is uh, approximately 100 kilometers outside Copenhagen. Spiritualism to me, or let us say communication with spirit is not new for me because that in a way all my life I have been surrounded by it. My mother was extremely spiritual. She was born in North Norway. So she had the sort of uh, shamanic kind of way with it. Uh, my father was into spiritualism in Denmark from roughly around 1943, 45, thereabouts where spiritualism within Denmark was a very high point for many people who went to see mediums in different kind of halls. We had quite a number of what we today call spiritualist churches in Denmark. Uh, some of them was called temples, some of them was in ordinary halls, and uh, some of them was in what we know today as spiritualist churches. So my father was probably the one who I have to say, sort of understood a little bit more about what the spirit communication were by the mediums in which he saw uh, at the time when he researched it within Denmark. And I have to say that uh, we had in Denmark some really fantastic mediums. And some of the mediums we had in Denmark at the time, back in the 40s and 50s and right into the 60s, were internationally known. Uh, they were recognized, they sat for psychic research, they sat for investigation, um, both in Germany and in France, and of course within the Nordic countries, uh, in Oslo, in Copenhagen. Uh, but we do have research centers into this kind of work. And these kind of mediums you would be familiar with uh, as we start doing this work international, who they were and their work. The reason for why I'm mentioning this as early as I do here is because of what I do see, quite interesting. And that is people who uses pictures of physical mediums in Denmark from the past, but have no knowledge of who they are, what they did, how they changed many people's view upon spiritualism, the hard times they had with skeptical people, 
and so on. And these are the three mediums I would like to highlight as we go forth. And that is uh, a lady known as uh, Anne Malone Rasmussen, we called her. She was tested and sat many, many years with psychic research, both in uh, Germany and also in France. Thereafter, we have uh, a physical medium known as Eitner Nielsen, who again sat for psychic research and was also in England, I have to say, because when he came over to England, he also worked and sat again for research in England. After that, we have Sven Türk. And Sven Türk was a photographer. He was not a spiritualist, but he did experiment, I have to say, with levitation, uh, with various different psychic uh, phenomena in, in which we had. And that was very much through Annie Meluna Rasmussen and her work. He had a laboratorium in Copenhagen, something called Vesterbro, where he had endless, I have to say, of experiment. Now, why I'm mentioning these three people is because I see their information, their pictures all over without letting anybody know anything about their background, that they were in fact Danish, all of them. And in specific Sven Turks pictures, I think has been so manipulated by so many people around who puts them up because of the levitation, without realizing the background, why these pictures was taken or even who sat for these research. Luckily enough, for all my years that I have studied this, and this is 50 years now, I have spoken to people who knew Anne Malone Rasmussen, sat with Anne Malone Rasmussen, and I have her diaries here, handwritten. Sven Türk is the same. I have spoken to people who sat with Sven Türk, saw what he could, investigated with Sven Türk mediums. I also have handwritten books about his work. And Eitner Nielsen, it is the same. I know his family. I have talked to them. I'm sitting with pictures and so forth. So I have gone into my work as a medium, as a physical medium, with my eyes wide open, not just sitting and just saying to myself, oh, that was wonderful what it did. Oh no, it's called research. And it's also called check double check and check again. This is where my work has started. It is called Check It Out. So when I started 50 years ago, when I relocated from Denmark into England, there was a purpose in that. The purpose was simple, that spiritualism in Denmark collapsed roughly around 1964, five there about, when our last medium passed over, Eitner Nielsen. And thereby, sort of Denmark didn't really open many more spiritualist churches or centers. But it was a time where I think that, well, people did other things. Um, it wasn't quite interesting in spiritualism. It became, as what it has been both in England and America, something from the past. Uh, so there was another way of, of living, of course, like we all go forward in time. But there was always something about Denmark, I have to say, that really, in my way of 50 years, wondering why that I have to relocate over to England. Remembering I was born in Denmark, was quite happily living in Copenhagen at that time, was a young girl. But I had experiences after experiences after experiences, both as a child and also as becoming a teenager and an adult. There was nobody I could go to. Nobody understood it. There was literally not a single soul that understood what it was I was trying to say. I was either completely a nutcase or of a googie gargi in the mind, as people say. I was all sorts of things, but I couldn't go with it. And I always remember that people would say, oh, she has a vivid imagination. Well, I did not have a vivid imagination. I just didn't have anybody in Denmark that could teach me or tell me what this was all about. Nobody understood it in Denmark. 
Of course, my father understood it. And he put his hands around me and protected me. So to my mother, she was a little bit more worried because she had, uh, she worked at a hospital at the time. But there was these kinds of things that I had to overcome. And yet I had experiences after experiences until one day, and this is where the key lies, maybe spirit had to find out how to get me to England. For the first, no, I did not speak the language English. Now the German, though we are close to Germany, I just didn't speak the languages. But one day, a friend in which I know, um, she came up and said to me, Mayan, would you like to come to England with me? And I looked at her and I said, why are you asking me? She said, because my girlfriend that's supposed to be with me can't come. And I went, what do you mean? She said, well, she can't come. Have you got a passport? We have the passport. And I said, yeah, but I didn't have the money. So she said, I have got the tickets. If you can find money for the tickets, we are staying in a bed and breakfast in Battersea. We can then go and we can have a good time in the swing in London. It was back in 1969. So my father was the one who gave me the ticket money to come to England. And then that was my beginning. I came over to Great Britain in 1969. And we was only here for about two days first to start off with when I met another Danish girl who lived over here. That was a friend of the friend who took me over called Lissy. And Lissy lived in Kilburn in North London. So we went there to have a cup of tea with her and a little chat. And I was amazed to walk into a very old fashioned English sort of house or flat. It's called a garden flat. And I was watching on the wall pictures of red Indians and Arabs. And I was going around, it was drawings and things like that. And I went, what on earth is this all about? I was just looking. And um, Lisa said, you seem to be completely fascinating by those pictures on the wall. And I said, yeah, uh, strange to come into a room like this and she laughed and she said oh my boyfriend's mother yeah is a medium and I went what's a medium didn't quite understand and didn't quite take it in at the time that she was a medium working in spiritualist churches in England at that time I had no idea what a heck a spiritualist church were no idea. So that sort of passed me a little, but was still fascinating about these paintings or drawings and this medium who, who Lisa's boyfriend's mother were. And it sort of passed me for a time. And then one day in London, when being over here, I came back, I returned because I liked London. It was almost like I have to be here. I then had to, of course, find a flat to live in. And uh, I went to Victoria Station, which is in South London, to go and view a flat in something called West Norwood. And I had to take the train from there. So on I hopped on the train, we call it an overground train, not an underground train. And I got off at the station called West Norwood. And as I came off the station, this piece of paper flew in the air and landed on my chest. And I just sort of took it off, looked at it and didn't understand it and put it in my pocket. So I went to view the flat, but the landlord, as we call him, was a little bit late. So I was invited in by Barbara and Jill Jackson, who lived in the middle floor and I was looking for the top floor. And we sat and had a cup of tea and I suddenly went in and I took this piece of paper out and I said to Jill Jackson, do you know what this is? And she sort of looked at it and all I could hear was, oh God. And then her daughter said, Bob, you know, what is it? What is it? And they both looked at me and went, oh God. And I sat like this and said, what is it? My English was still very poor. And she said, well, 
there is apparently a meeting of some kind of spiritual kind in a spiritualist church further down the road where they have a medium. And again, this blast at work medium came back in again. This church, this thing about spirit, this thing about weird thing. And I thought, huh? And it ended up with that I got the flat upstairs and then me and Jill, which is the daughter, we went down to West Norwood Spiritualist Church. We found it because it was on this piece of paper. And we was walking outside the street and I have to say, damn it, if I've got to go in there, there's weird people in there. And I didn't really know if I wanted to go in and, 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 and me and Jill was just going, oh, shall we run away again? And suddenly this elderly gentleman stood in the door and went, ah, ah, young ladies, are you coming in or not? And just that was enough to get us to jump and run in. So there was two seats left in the front row. So I thought, oh, we better go up and sit up there. So we ran in and sat down. And there was um, an organ playing and we were singing this song and I thought this is blast of a religious sort of uh, salvation army kind of meeting. Hallelujah, Jesus Christ or whatever. And I thought, oh God, you know. Suddenly a little old lady, always remember her. She had a little bun in her hair, sort of all the hair was put back and she had a long grayish kind of knitted cardigan on and sort of a long, I can only say skirt or dress underneath it. And she sort of came up and she sort of sat down on her chair and we had a chairman sitting next to her that was introducing her. I thought, well, I well, wonder what's happening here. Didn't know still what this was all about. And suddenly this little old lady on this massive big chair, I have to say, in which I today sit in myself because I work <laughs> in that church. She just sat like this and she suddenly bent herself forward, vroom, like this, sat up again, deep breath. And I remember saying to Jill Jackson, she's gone asleep. She's definitely asleep. She's snoring like this and still didn't know what was going on. And she suddenly arose, this lady, from the chair and stood there and she just looked around with her eyes wide open. But they were strange, her eyes. It was like if they didn't really blink. But she was just looking and then suddenly this blasted finger pointed straight at me like that. And I went, oh, God, like that. And I remember grabbing Jill and hanging on to her, <laughs> to her hands. She says, in Norwegian, she said, welcome, Marion. This is your grandmother, Josefine from Norway. I don't know if I could die, I would have done or peed in my pants, I could have done. And I remember all I wanted to do was run out through the back door and get out of here because now I didn't know what was happening. And just in Norwegian, she just said, welcome to England. We have now got you. This is where you belong. That is my introduction into A, spiritualism, A, into communication, A, into trance work, everything. And I remember leaving that meeting and I was just going, I can't believe this. What is she talking about? But I remember from that time off, things become more alive around me. I remember starting to damn hear, hear, hear voices. I remember things was happening. But to be able to calm me down, spirit are so graceful the way that they do it. They are so fantastic the way they do it. I was introduced to a young girl, a little bit younger than I, called Susie Parker. And Susie Parker and I then became investigators into spiritualism because she has been in that church once before and she had this thing about healing and she had this thing about wanted to know. So she became my companion my living companion in my research into spiritualism. So one day we thought to ourselves, oh, let's go back into the church again. But he had something called psychometry. 
Psychometry, as we all know, is, is somebody who can read an object. And in the same church in West Norwood, we went upstairs in a tiny weeny room. And I think that I could probably sit about maybe 20 people there, no more. And then there was a little box uh, as you came in through the door. And a little box that had numbers, one, two, three, four, five, down to 20. And there was not many people there. So we had to take a piece of jewelry and put it down. Let's say I was number five and Susie put hers down in number six. Then we paid our one pound to get in. And we went and we sat down and up came the medium, Florrie Roberts. And Florrie Roberts started to tick things up and pick things up and were given messages and what she felt and this kind of thing. And funny enough, me and Sue was the last ones that she took up or she picked up. But when she picked my one up, she just hold on to it. And all she said, natural born medium. And then she said, I don't understand that, but I've been asked to pick the other one up too. So she picked Sue's up. So now she has two rings in her hand. And then she looked at me and Sue and she says, the only things that I have been told by spirit are, you are like a pair of dice. If one throws the dice and number six comes up, you will also have number six. If four come up, you will also have number four. You are meant to be together. You are meant to traveling the route together into spiritualism and you will not depart before death. And me and Sue sat there looking at each other, remembering we have only known each other maybe for a week or two. But today, Susie Parker is a fantastic homeopath and she's also my best friend in Great Britain in 50 years <coughs> in which we have known each other. It is a fantastic story, but that is where it all begins. <coughs> the spirit interference with getting somebody to get me to England. When I am in England, finding me a place to live. Sue lived a half a street further away from me going into West Norwood Spiritualist Church, being directed by Spirit and the piece of paper, then started to work only about two or three, was it a month after I came out, I tried to sit in a circle in Stockwell at this time. The teacher put his hands up in the air, his name was Ernest, said, I can't teach you, you might as well go and work. <clears throat> he couldn't teach me. So we have this with about being a natural medium, Many people say that they are born with a gift or the ability, I better call it, not a gift because it isn't a gift, this is an ability. And there comes at times where people say to me, oh, what can I do when I see this and this? I said, well, haven't the world of spirit taught you, told you, pushed you into it, showed you the way as which you have done with me all my life, but apparently not. And that is why I think that there's a lot of imagination around. There's a lot of people who wish to be there but don't actually have the compassion or have it within them to research what this is all about. They don't have it to go out and explore it, find it. I mean, my work has taken me all over Great Britain. It has taken me into Denmark, Norway, Sweden, America, France. It's taken me everywhere in my research. I have traveled the length of the country to find out what this is all about sat in investigation, looked at mental mediumship, physical mediumship, healing, a lot of aspect under there. A lot of people don't know, psychic operations I have been looking at, trying to study it. There's loads of things sitting in circle, learning, rescue, circles, mental circle, physical circles, trance circle. And I'm sitting, today it is not done as what it was in the past, where we really had to go out and we had to research it. Today, people go in trance in cabinets. You don't need to sit in a cabinet to be a trance medium. That then led me into more teaching. I wanted to know. And spirit never let me down in any circumstances with the people like Gordon Higginson, uh, uh, Leslie Flint, um, uh, 
I sat with Leslie uh, and we have got uh, uh, Rose Gladden, uh, other people that a lot of people wouldn't even know, but was top mediums in Great Britain. I met them all. I worked with them all. Uh, we went to the psychic dinner and dances together. We had fun together. We worked in churches together. The one things we learned, and it doesn't exist, not even in the spiritualist churches anymore. And I find that quite sad because within our mediumship, <clears throat> I have to 